Hey guys, I did a silent version of this tour, but now I want to do the annotated version of this aquarium tour. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on two months into this aquascape being created, and uh, now it's been completely stocked with critters and uh, plants and it's basically going through its algae phase and we're going to talk about how we're kind of mitigating that as well as uh, what's going on in here as far as all the creatures we've placed in here. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Uh, we're going to go over a little bit of uh, plant science, a little bit of fish science and uh, filtration, uh, ecology, all that stuff. So. So, um, basically here you can see we're looking at some sparkling gouramis. There's five of them in this aquarium. We've got a couple males here with the, showing their nice, uh, their nice beautiful red hues off along with their blue and their beautiful blue eyes that you see on both the males and females. Uh, up back we have our main star of the tank, which is going to be the Epistogramma uh, Panduro, and the male is hiding back up in here in this little cave area that we built. Now, this cave, if you've watched the building of this tank, uh, you know that I have mentioned that that is a cave back there that goes into the hillside, so there's kind of a little chamber in there that's then surrounded by lava rocks. Um, right here is the male, and uh, he'll color up depending on if he's showing off for the female, but right now he's not. He's got that beautiful pink tail and those orange pectoral fins, and then he's got a lavender and purple kind of hue on the body. Um, just a really cool fish. Uh, he's pretty much max size right now, about two and a half inches, and the female's more like one and a half to two inches. Uh, and so they'll do well in this 17 gallon tank, even with all the hardscape in here, even though we've only got 12 gallons of water or less in here, they should do well. So the other thing that we've got going on as far as stock load is we've got a group, thanks to Jerry Serple, uh, Morris, uh, a viewer, We've got a, a group of Celestial Pearl Danios. The females you can spot because they have a little gravid spot, which is a little black spot right by their anal fin on the underside of their belly. And like, like this one has that's swimming away. Let's see if we can catch her. See that black dot there? So that means she's the female. And now right there, this big guy coming right at us, that's not actually a Celestio Pearl Danio. That is actually a mix. These two up top are a mix of Celestio Pearl Danios and Erythromicrons. They're a hybrid, and that's the Emerald Dwarf Rasbora. And you can see they're bigger than the Celestio Pearl uh, Rasboras. Um, and so they don't really have a name yet. Um, other than maybe Emerald Celestial Pearl or Celestial Emerald. Uh, but you can see they've got a brighter blue and then they still have the, the dots. Now I've also seen those come out with stripes instead of dots. So there must be two variations of hybridization. But both hybrids come out without the stripes that you see on these uh, CPDs that are all natural. Uh, the CPDs that are all natural have kind of an orange uh, fin coloration with either yellow or black stripes banding in it, whereas the hybrids have only the pure orange finage. Um, also in here, we've got two Autosynclus uh, catfish, uh, Odosynclus, if you want to be specific, and they're there basically to clean the glass, help me clean the glass, and uh, they're doing a really good job of that task, so I'm happy with that. The other thing that we've got in here that's just temporary, there you can see some of the color on the male. Uh, film never does it justice to the iridescence, but uh, he's not necessarily shy. He just kind of has his own prerogative of what he wants to do in the aquarium. So it's, it's sometimes... Uh, just fun to watch this quirky fish and there's the female there she'll turn completely yellow with that uh stripe on her face 
giving her the name of the the Panduro or Panda uh, is where that word comes from uh, name. Now here you can see the profile of the autosynclus and uh, just kind of hanging out. Sometimes it's it's a little hard to get things to focus. Sorry about that uh, on that close up because of the depth of field in this tank. Now, when I started this aquarium, uh, there was no algae, and then about a month in, we just got a terrible, uh, just crush load of algae. Uh, so, what I did is I decided to put in these horned nearites, and these horned nearite snails um, do an absolutely amazing job of cleaning off the hardscape. They are a really phenomenal uh, fit, uh, aquatic <laughs> creature for doing that. They, you can see where they've worked their way up that rock, and you can see where they've been and where they haven't been on these rocks. So, so far, um, these rocks that are more exposed to the top of the aquarium, uh, if we take a look up here, you can see that the algae is a little more intense. I've also put a hut up there for the apistos in case they want to use it, but so far they like that natural cave much more, or the, uh, the Loganondromy bold eye silver that's in the corner back there uh, seems to be their choice. Now everybody asks me, Alex, what are these uh, toadstool looking plants? And these are Hydrocaudal verticillata. They are in the pennywort family, and I planted them, if you recall, by putting a trench, cutting a trench with my, uh, my spade tool right along the edge of all the rocks and just laying a piece of it in each trench. And now they've kind of found their way up to the surface, even though they were completely buried. Uh, and yeah, they're doing a good job. Now, a lot of the crypts that I put into this tank, these are red tiger crypt spiralis. Same with this one here. They've done really well, except for they have gotten a lot of algae on them. Uh, if we zoom in and look closely, you can see they've got a few kinds of it. Some hair algae, there's some black beard, and then there's also some uh, algae like staghorn algae uh, that's in here too that's a little more infrequent, but it uh, occurs. here. Here's some right here. Um, and so far, nothing's eating that staghorn algae that I've found. Uh, the snails should be. Uh, the plecos, in theory, should be. Uh, Autosynclus don't really seem to do that. They, they more keep up, here's the other one, with uh, munching on the biofilm and preventing that algae from ever getting too thick in the first place. That's kind of their um, specialty in the fish tank, in the aquarium. And here you can see the plecos are actually cleaning every inch of these plants kind of scrubbing them and once they get older they can get a little too hard on that these are ancestrous cirrhosis or bristle nose plecos and these ones are a few months old maybe three to five months old uh and they haven't been in a high food environment they've kind of just been hanging out in a community tank and in here they've got all the food they could want um on these rocks and things so that's that's what they're working on cleaning and uh i appreciate it thanks guys uh and they can really get in between the cracks and things which is nice now the other spot that's really hard to clean in here is going to be the actual leaves of plants so this is where i could use a siamese algae eater now if i got one they get five or six inches long eventually and uh you know i would have to decide then what to do with it later don't really want to keep it in this tank but they will eat the algae off here they'll eat the staghorn algae they'll eat they'll eat any algae uh if you get the reticulated kind they'll eat pretty much any algae the other little algaes that we're getting are these little tufts of algae, kind of like Blackbeard, but it's it's a dark green, um, kind of like Maramo moss ball type algae, and uh, those tufts just seem to appear uh, over a week or two, and they form right in in little divots on these rocks and things. Now. The nearite snails, right now they're spawning, they're, they're, you could see that they were mating with each other, and so they leave these little teeny 
white eggs on things. However, the zebra nearites, those horned nearites, like they've been in here for over a month and a half now. And you can see they haven't left a ton of eggs. They've left a few eggs in a few spots. Whereas in other cases, um, if you guys are familiar with what they can do, uh, you'll see some stuff in some aquariums where one nearite will literally bedazzle, you know, every square inch of some hardwood or, or of a rock or whatnot. So I'm pretty happy with, with that. And it, it also the other thing that's been going on is I add a little crushed coral and I'll probably, once this is all settled in another month or two, you know, we'll trim back all the leaves and, um, this carpet will continue to thicken and grow. This is Glossostigma uh, elatoides and, or elantoides, and, uh, it's growing in all right. The cardin, uh, Lobelia cardinalis is also growing in with it, which kind of mimics the same leaf shape, but it grows a little differently. And then we've got, um, some Cryplutea also in there. Uh, and the Cryplutea can get quite a bit bigger, probably bigger than we want. There's, there's a female sparkling gourami back there. Um, with the blue eyes still, but less of the red and um, and purple and, and darker blue colorings like this guy here. Um, but in any case, the, uh, the crypts could get a little big, uh, but, you know, they kind of stay dense if you've got enough light. And right now we've got a lot of light on this tank. We've got a Fluval 3.0 that's at about 70% of most of the bandwidths. I can share that. Um, I can share you guys the, a screenshot of where everything is. And then we've also got uh, the uh, Archeon light that's on here that's just kind of a cool blue light, um, cool blue white light. There's also a few bladder snails and ram's horn snails that have managed to sneak into this aquarium. However, I'm pulling them out as I see them. Uh, I, I, I don't necessarily want them in this tank. I like them in a lot of tanks, but don't need them in this tank. Um, lastly, we've got some yellow uh, neocaridinas in this tank. You can see some in here. They're hiding pretty well because, oh, there's a lot of staghorn or whatever kind of algae you want to call it there. Um, they're hiding pretty well because of uh, these apistos being the newest resident. And uh, they know that they are on the dinner plate, in theory. So uh, up here, we are also using uh, Lobelia cardinalis. Looks pretty good back there. Um, we've got some Rotala pink mini butterfly, orange mini butterfly. And then Limnophilia aromatica. Um, we've got, uh, some more of mix of all three of those back here. And then also we've got some Bacopa Colorada. Um, what else do we have? We have a Carolensis, uh, Lagenandra Carolensis in here, uh, which is a smaller version of the Lagenandra Meboldi, uh, and more of a natural model sage color. And then we've got another, uh, we've got a red, um, crypt back here too that's doing well and we've got another carolensis we've also got a uh, normal crypt spiralis so there's a few in there that that we started off as tissue cultures two months ago and yeah some did die the pink the pink flamingos pretty much all died other than the one back there um but the, everything else is kind of deciding to come back. You can actually see there is a pink flamingo that's put out a couple leaves here. Even after, oh, there goes that shrimp running, or one of the shrimp running up along the glass there. Um, just cruising, doing her thing. Uh, and then we've also got a heater behind the catapa leaf. Uh, so it's kind of a little mini heater for, for a 10 to 15 gallon. Uh, here's that other shrimp hanging out. So yeah, they're, they're around the tank, but, uh, sometimes they kind of cruise. It looks like, um, it looks like it probably got startled by, by one of the fish. Also, we're using CO2 and we're pumping it at this rate here. You can see the little fluval head that we're using there as the diffuser. Um, and it's just, it comes with the little mini kit 
and it's like five to ten dollars depending on where you find it and I always really like these these uh, diffusers I think they work just as good if not better than the diffusers that you get um, online for for bigger tanks I mean it I'm running with one of these big 20 pound tanks and it's doing well. Um, the last few plants in here that we didn't cover, I guess, uh, we've got the uh, Kabamba Furcata in here uh, that'll be kind of a rainbow color. That will need to be trimmed heavily. It grows quickly. It's kind of in here to help suck up the carbon and, and nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia that are all part of the uh, active substrate here with the ADA um, uh, Amazonia. And then we've also got sand, and then we've got gravel, lava rock, sand again, and then more dirt. So we've got this super, super deep substrate and terrace back here with all these layers. So my goal is with that cave that runs back into the lava rock, now we're seeing more stratification, um, is to get the anaerobic development um, where there's literally no air down in here and and that can help fix uh, ammonia and nitrates for the plant roots that really go down um, you can see the bubbles forming in here of gas actually and then uh, this kind of mid-level is a anoxic layer that is less oxygen but in there you can get cyanobacteria and if you've got iron and or sulfur then that level if it has water just kind of pooling and and gently going through it which is what the lava rock is kind of for um up on this layer here and right there uh and where the cave cuts through is uh it, it kind of acts as a bit of a plenum now there's another one on this side here those are vinegar eels and uh that will also help fix uh, the bacteria. Now, anoxic meaning uh, less oxygenated or that the bacteria in that region doesn't need to use free oxygen. It can rip it off of other molecules and other elements. Uh, uh, or not other elements, but other molecules. It can rip it off to get that element. Whereas... Uh, the bacteria that's on this pre-sponge filter and the hang off the back filter uh, is totally, it needs air. It's uh, aerobic bacteria, the nitrifying bacteria that most of us are used to using. So we kind of have a little sponge filter and then I've kind of gutted the filter on this. So the filter has, um, it has totally, everything's been pulled out other than the coarse sponge at the bottom. And then there's just bio beads and filter floss uh, is basically all that's in there. And I use some older uh, filter material. That's probably why we got so much algae so quickly initially. Um, but I think it's worth it for being able to cycle the tank that much quicker. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on in here, guys. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you've had fun watching uh, this Aquascape come along as we... As we use up these nutrients that are a bit on uh, steroid mode right now, we'll actually start seeing the carpets grow in fully. You know, we'll do things, we'll have to do things like trim it all the way back to the ground and then, you know, suck up that material so it doesn't just build up. And over here, we're going to have to constantly, I've already done it twice, be trimming this rotala and uh, the limnophilia and... Uh, there's actually a hygro, uh, hygrophila pinnatophyta in there too. And I'm hoping that it will come out and kind of come up and crust the water like this. Um, that'd be cool if, if we've got that going on this side, which is kind of the lower side. So you don't expect it as much as on the side that's so high. And right now the water's a little low. We need to probably top it off. But um, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on in here. Um, hopefully it settles out and there's no uh, algae and then we'll take out probably all the plecos and we might we might cycle through some other plecos here you can see uh the the front entrance to the cave as it were and then there's a back entrance that this male might go up into yep and uh so i think they're going to use that rather than the hut which uh suits me just fine i'd rather them use the natural uh, crevice and cave um, to be hanging out in uh, if they're going to spawn which is the goal 
and uh, the shrimp won't stay long if if they're going to be spawning in here i have no uh illusion that they're going to they're, they're going to last with the pistos in here with them with babies they will eat them for the protein and for the just the thrill of the hunt you know kind of that cat reflex of of hunting but I'm having fun with this uh, aquarium. It's very relaxing. Um, as I've been, you know, I was sick, and as I've been healing up, uh, just sitting here and watching things has been really rewarding. I mean, th this carpet over here is growing in well. There's the hydrocolic tripartita also, I forgot to mention, that's planted. And that kind of comes in draping down in here and up here. Uh, we also have some that's working its way here. And that is one that can kind of grow over the rocks too. Uh, and it's kind of a fun one. These, uh, hydrocotyl will have to just, uh, hydrocotyl verticillata will have to cut off at the, the base of these big tall ones right near the, the main runner root. And then you'll just get all sorts of new growth. And it, it just keeps going and going and keeps running. Sometimes you'll need to unbury the runner if it worked its way up here or something. Uh, and then replant it and likewise with all the rotalas I've already been cutting them so that they're about an inch or two inches tall and they're growing within three or four days back up to the six seven inch mark and I've been putting those two inch cuttings up here uh, and then they're all just eating up the uh, nitrates and nitrites and then I've been doing about two water changes about 50% um, big water changes at first uh, right now. So the TDS is nice and low. The pH is slightly acidic with the catapa leaves, the plants, and the substrate that I chose. But there's also a little bit of calcium and carbon in it because of the crushed coral. And uh, I think we'll get that nice trail kind of look going again. We'll tighten it up uh, and the slope upward. Can't really see it so well right now, but there's a nice slope upward in the tank. Uh, and then there's the kind of V slope also. So we'll do that. Um, I think we might take the hang off the back off and just do it like a normal lily pipe stem kind of glass filter. Even if we run it from a hang off the back, which would be a fun uh, episode to kind of go over how you can get fixtures for hang off the backs that actually transform them uh, or, or make one yourself, I should say. Uh, but yeah, so that's the aquarium. That's the Iwagumi slash uh, jungle uh, garden nature tank, if, if you will. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the little tour. I hope you guys enjoyed checking out the plants and aminals. And uh, if you like this kind of stuff, you want to watch more aquascaping videos and uh, going over how I'm running my tanks. Uh, by the way, this is getting about eight hours of light a day right now. And uh, it, I had it down at six for a little while, but then it went. we, we brought it up to eight now that the algae's kind of dying back down with all the little helpers in here. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn more about this, uh, subscribe and you'll be alerted when the next video comes out. Um, so yeah. All right, guys. Well, I will talk to you later. Uh, have a great day, and uh, be sure to enjoy your aquariums and your fish.